For more frequent video uploads, feel free to support Animeko High at Patreon. The link is in the description below. The morning of day 3. I had already completed my little jaunt to the Dwarven Kingdom and exchanged my stellars for gold coins. That takes care of that. Now we'll have to wait and see how the schemer behind this reacts. So, all anxieties for the future quelled, let's go back to enjoying this festival. Kicking off, we had today's first main draw, the tournament final between Masayuki and Gopta. The Colosseum was already whipped up for this, people arguing and betting with each other over who would win. Mjolmile was taking those bets, of course, and I looked forward to seeing how much we'd make off that. The most surefire way to win at gambling, after all, is to run the game. No matter who looked like the favorite, you were always going to profit that way. I had made a bet on Gopta, in hopes of maybe earning some pocket money out of it. No, it wasn't because he was a long shot. Definitely not. I certainly didn't place a large sum on Gopta just because the odds were so crazily skewed against him. Ah, uh, um, but that didn't matter anyway, alright? I had a hobgoblin to cheer on. Alright, all right, ladies, ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, the final, the final match, match of the tournament, the tournament is here at is last. last. Which, of Which of our two our competitors two will seize the championship for himself today? today? Will it be will Lightspeed be Masayuki, Masayuki or Gobda, or Gobda, Gobda the, fighter the fighter rising, rising up and making a splash as he vies for a spot in the illustrious Big Four? Soka's commentating was as fresh as ever. She was talking up Gobda in such a breezily casual manner. It was, in a way, insurance to keep Gobda from ditching the tournament and hiding out somewhere, a cruel way of doing it but damn effective. Diablo lifted up his hand. The arena fell silent. Was it me, or were some of the female audience members falling for him? I banished the thought from my mind. If Gopta beat Masayuki today, all my problems were in the past. If, on the other hand, Masayuki really was a fighter on the level of Hanada, Gopta was toast, but we could still learn a lot from this battle. If Masayuki had, well, pretty much any trouble dispatching Gopta today, for example, we'd know that he was no threat at all to us. Gopta had both Ranga and astonishing good luck on his side. It wasn't a bad way to test Masayuki out, I thought. Soka was now busy introducing the competitors in detail. Once that was done, the fight would begin. I patiently awaited the moment. How much of Masayuki's real skill could Gopta pull out of him? Masayuki was panicking. When he saw Bovix and Equix's battle yesterday, realizing he'd be fighting whoever won, he turned pale as a ghost. I'm dead. If, if I fight either of those monster freaks, they'll rip me in half. Somehow, he'd found the right words to turn Bovix against himself and forfeit the match. He really wanted to pat himself on the back for that one. But the match after that threw Masayuki right back into despair. How the hell can I beat them? Did they only open this country's tournament to insane monsters or what? Both the competitors at yesterday's closing match were more terrifying than even Bovix. It made him want to curse at the world. He didn't eat one bit last night, feeling all the world like a condemned prisoner waiting for the call to the gallows. Looking back, things really have been going too well. Leaning too much on the strength of his friends, letting people bandy him around as a hero and champion, he'd let it go to his head, figuring, it'll all work out somehow. And it had, so far, enough so that Masayuki never really doubted it much, or maybe he deliberately strove not to think about it. He believed, without evidence, that his group was invincible and could defeat all comers. That was how Masayuki managed to maintain some sense of sanity about all this. But how did I kid myself into trusting any of those stupid delusions? I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. The urge had seized his mind again and again. Hey, once you win your fight tomorrow, Masayuki, how about you move right on and challenge the demon lord on the spot? The question from Jinrai was so innocent. Masayuki wanted to shout you're crazy. At him. This was all that demon lord Rimuru's fault. He looked so kind, so vulnerable, that Masayuki wasn't as wary as he should have been. Otherwise, he would have taken more careful steps to protect himself. Either way, said Jiwoo. It's only a matter of time, Sir Masayuki. Soon, you will slap the demon lord silly, and this nation will finally be free. But shouldn't we talk with Yuki before he fights him? You're calling this an easy fight, but what if he somehow loses tomorrow? Jinrai looked up. Whoa, Bernie, are you kidding me? Yes, I'd be more worried if Lion Mask made it to the finals, but Gopta, this hobgoblin? It has to be in the bag. The battle will be over before he can even summon that beast. No, it wasn't in the bag. Masayuki had no idea how he'd defend himself. All he could picture was a future full of teeth, claws, and daggers. 
But his companions had so much faith in him, he couldn't reveal his feelings to them. So he just nonchalantly said, Well, I'll try my best. And bluffed his way through the evening. And now, time had beaten its merciless path all the way to this moment. Masayuki visited the bathroom several times in the lead up to the final, just to make sure he didn't pee himself in the arena. What am I gonna do? How can I escape this coliseum alive? Facing him was a fighter who exuded coolness. His name was Gabta, according to the lady announcer next to them. Jiwu thought beating a hobgoblin was a cinch, but Masayuki just couldn't see it. A hobgoblin? You liar. Goblins are the weakest monsters in the world. So what did this guy do to evolve into such a heroic-looking dude? Ladies, Ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, the final, the final round, round of the first the Tempest, Tempest battle, battle tournament, tournament is about, is about to, begin. to begin. On one, on one side, side, we have Gobda, young, young captain, captain of the Goblin, goblin Riders and a member of the Demon, demon Lord Romuru's personal staff. staff. On, the on the other, Lightspeed, Lightspeed Masayuki, hero, hero and champion, champion of the Western, Western nation. nation. What kind of battle will these two giants show us today? You can see them staring each other down, here in the center of the arena. In just a few moments. When she stopped talking, the battle would begin. Oh crap. I'm seriously running out of time. He'd thought his bladder was empty. His nerves were telling him otherwise. They pounded against his mind, urging him to release himself. If he wasn't so worked up, he might have been interested in things like the cute butt lurking underneath the base of the announcer's tail, but now was no time for that. Masayuki recalled his skill, chosen one, his soul unique. He still didn't know much about it. The name had been reported to him by this cold, businesslike voice in his mind. Only recently had he come to know that this skill provided him assorted effects. He knew it made people react in ways that always benefited him, making him worshipped as a modern-day champion. But he couldn't find a way to turn it off, and now, it had brought him into this arena. Yeah, and that power did its stuff against Bovix yesterday, too. And if it can just get me safely through this one. As far as Masayuki knew, Chosen One simply made everyone assume the wrong thing about him. He resolved to bet on it one more time. This inner decision helped calm him a little. He looked at his foe. Then, was it a coincidence? Their eyes met. And he saw that he was looking a bit agitated, too. Fidgety. Huh? Wait, is this gonna work? Opponents reacted this way to him at the tournaments in Anglesia, too, assuming Masayuki was all-powerful and throwing in the towel. It happened more often than he could count. Now, maybe, just maybe, he could win this. And the moment he thought that, his legs stopped shaking. Maybe, if all goes well, I can win without doing anything again. His wits were returning to him as he thought it over. But in all too short of a time, he'd have to reconsider his wisdom. Ready, Ready and, and begin. begin. At Soka's signal, the battle kicked off. Let's do it. Gopta acted first, plunging straight ahead. I feared this was some kamikaze move to get himself hurt, but not too hurt, so he could quit. I was wrong. I guess that fishing pole I'd dangled in front of him was pretty damn tempting. Heading straight for his foe, Gopta slipped right past him in a baseball-style slide, taking position against the outer boundary like yesterday. His eyes were on his foe the whole time, but Masayuki didn't even react, slowly turning back toward Gopta with a distant smile. Whoa, 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 is handsomeness, is handsomeness the, key the key to strength, strength after, after all? all? Gobda's tricky, tricky maneuvers were totally, totally ignored as the dashing Masayuki shows just how unfazed and comfortable, and comfortable he, is. he is. Soka's commentary hit hard. It'd make anyone with hang-ups about their looks cry, not just Gobda. Yeah, Masayuki was handsome, but this was playing favorites a bit too much. <laughs> all part of the playbook. You're acting like nothing I can do will hit you, huh? I wanted to see just how far I could go with my own strength today, but I can't even touch you, huh? Then it's time to use this, my new, ultimate power. Oh lord, he was up to no good again. This was so going to fail. No one was around to stop him, but I really wished he'd actually try practicing something before busting it out in public like this. Report. Last night, the subject Gobda obtained the unique skill Summon Demon Wolf. It is believed that the subject Ranga's forcing himself into yesterday's summoning is the cause, but it combines with the extra skill Unify to unify the summoned Ranga with the summoner. Huh? So wait, Gopta could use Summon Demon Wolf to, like, merge with Ranga? How did he? Hey, wasn't Raphael about to say something last night but kept quiet instead? Was it about that? That accusation is. That accusation is what, huh? If Raphael couldn't even drive himself to finish the sentence, something must be going on. Gopta suddenly awakening to this crazy new power out of nowhere was way too unnatural to believe. 
I was beginning to think Raphael may have helped grease the wheels a little, helping Gop to pick up this skill. Raphael stayed silent. He never lied to me, but he was in no hurry to answer with the truth, either. I could force the issue, but maybe I didn't need to. Let's just see what happens. Good timing, at least. Check this out. Transform. The air warped around him. Ranga appeared behind his back, and then they unified, Ranga's body seeming to merge with Gopta's. To make a long story short, the results looked like a bipedal version of Ranga, and I'll admit it. It looked way cool. Damn it. Why does Gopta get to transform into something so awesome like that? Sweet. What is that? So cool. Milam, next to me, was dancing in her seat. I could understand her excitement. Gopta drove me insane sometimes. Turning into some dashing fantasy creature like this. Look at, Look that. at that. Gopta has, has transformed into something, something far, from far from himself. Yes. A composed Diablo said to the excited Soka, whose voice had ratcheted up an octave or so. The ability to infuse your own body with the power of a summoned creature. A very rare skill. So Gopta is using the power of the creature he summoned yesterday for himself? Amazing. We're witnessing something amazing here, folks. Wait. I whispered. So it's kind of like Gopta extracting all of Ranga's force for his own use? Impressive, isn't it? Ranga seems to be giving himself up to Gopta, but this combo might work a lot better than I thought. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Rembaru, Jason Kenji, Mark Manalo, Soma Nisan, Mao, Mars Bull, Byron Me, Mark Gian Prospero, Skatosh Corner Store, and last but not least, shout out to Box Cyclone. I'll see you guys in the next video.